This video is brought to you by PipeDrive. PipeDrive is the easy to use CRM designed to increase your sales. Stay tuned to the end of the video to learn more. When dealing with your spreadsheets, it can be difficult to determine what all of this data means. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about how to set up your own pivot table right here in Google Sheets. Hello everyone, Scott Friesen here at Simpletivity, helping you to get more done and enjoy less stress. And I know a lot of people tend to be intimidated by a pivot table, but I'm gonna show you how it is much easier than you think and how you can interpret this data in any way that you like. What we need to do is come up here to data and about halfway down we've got the option to create a pivot table. We're going to select that and the first thing that we need to do is select our data range. So we're going to select this little icon here to select that data range and what's most important is that you also include the headers because that is key as we create our pivot table. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to select the data range that I want, including my headers, and I'm going to say OK. And the next thing we need to decide is if we want to put this pivot table on a new sheet or an existing sheet. Now, I typically choose a new sheet. That's what we're going to use today because it just gives us a lot more space. But if you want, you can have a pivot table right over here to the right. So I'm going to say Create. It's going to open up a new sheet, and now we've got a blank slate, something for us to start working with. Now here we've got our rows where we're going to decide what types of data, what types of information we want to, dis to display here. And then on the top, we have our columns where we get to choose what we want to display here. And the power of a pivot table is it's going to bring these two values together, and it's going to show us all of this great data here in between. Now on the right-hand side, we have our pivot table editor and right off the bat you can see that it's giving us a few different suggestions. Now there's a chance that Google may have guessed correctly as to what you are after but we want to look and get comfortable with using and creating our own pivot table because there's a good chance there's something specific that you're after. If you ever need to change the selected area you can always do that here as well. Uh, for example if your data set expands or includes more information but uh, we're going to leave that for right now. So first off, let's start with rows. We're going to hit this Add button, and you can see we have all of our headers from our data set, from everything here that we see on Sheet 1. So for myself, um, for our example, I'm going to choose my sales rep. So I'm going to select rep, and here you can see they are now all displayed here on the left-hand side. Now I can choose if I want to order them in a particular way. Because we're dealing with names, it seems to only make sense that I'm going to use it in ascending order. And by default, we're going to have this show totals check. Now you can always uncheck that, but in most cases when you're dealing with a pivot table, uh, you're going to want to see this grand total data at the bottom as well. Now the other thing that you should note is that it's not as if this add button becomes disabled because you can actually layer on additional rows and additional columns as a part of creating your pivot table. So for example, if I hit add rows again, uh, this time I could choose something like items. And here you can see now I've got a second row which is breaking out the products which these sales reps have sold. So I can see, for example, Andrews has sold uh, binders and pencils, uh, but someone like uh, Jones has sold binders, pens, pen sets, and pencils. So we can start to layer that information as well. But let's keep things relatively simple. If you hit the X here, that's going to remove it from the pivot table. And that would do the same thing here as well. It's not minimize, it's actually going to remove it. Next up, let's choose what we want to be displayed here amongst our columns. So I'm going to hit that Add button again, and we get the same uh, choices here, uh, except for our representatives, because they're already listed here. And what I'm going to choose in this case is I'm going to choose the actual items, the actual products that my reps are selling. I'm going to select that, and here you can see we've got our uh, five different products. You know, again, going back to our original sheet, it can be hard to tell even how many different items we're selling or how many different reps I have. But of course, the pivot table summarizes all of that data right here for us. So I've got my products here across the right. I've got my representatives here across the left-hand side. Now, next up, we want to go to our values. What do we want to display in the intersection of our items? 
and our representatives. So I'm going to hit that add button once again, and we've got a variety of different choices here. Now, in my case, I'm going to choose units. I want to see who is selling how many units. So I'm going to select this units option, and immediately we've got all of this great data available to us. So for example, in a snapshot, I can see that all of my reps have sold at least some binders, right? Everyone is selling binders. But then in the very next column, I can see that only three of them have ever sold a desk within this particular time frame. So, you know, immediately I can start to break down complicated pieces of information, a complicated data set, and find out trends and find out information that I'm after here. Um, once again, we've got a few different choices here in terms of how we want to summarize this data. If I choose this option here, I could summarize it by a few different ways, including averages and counts and uh, maximums and minimums. I'm going to leave that one as sum right here. But if I go over here, I can also show it as a percentage if I want to. So for example, maybe I want to show a percentage of the row. So in this case, um, you can see that uh, Andrews, for example, most of his sales have been coming from pencils, right? 84% of his sales have been coming from pencils. And I can quickly see that although Smith was one of the few people to sell a desk, that only makes up, you know, 1.28% of all of the units um, that uh, she has sold in this, uh, in this time frame as well. So again, a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can display that data. And because we've left those grand totals marks checked, we have the grand total here both by the reps on the right hand side, but we also see it by the products as well. So I can quickly see that uh, Jones seems to be my top salesperson here selling nearly 400 items in total. Um, uh, he's also pretty even across, you know, the things that he's uh, selling here. Uh, Thompson, maybe Thompson is relatively new to the team, uh, selling it quite a bit less than, than everyone else, but also only selling two different products. Now, the last thing that we want to look at here when we're designing our pivot table is filters. So if we select add, again, we can filter things by another uh, unit or another way of looking at things. So in this case, I'm going to select unit cost. I want to be able to filter out maybe some of my cheaper or my more expensive items. So I'm going to select unit cost. Nothing's going to happen immediately here because I need to decide how I want to filter out that information. So it's saying right now it's showing all items. I'm going to select that. And here you can see it's got a list of all of the prices, all of my uh, uh, unit costs here. I'm just going to say clear because I don't want to display all of them right now. And maybe I just want to display everything that is $5 or less. So I'm just going to select these first four here, and I'm going to select OK. And now you can see that my pivot table has shrunk a little bit because desks are my high-end item, so it's not even displayed here. It's much more expensive than $5, but I can see in that $5 and less range, OK, now things are a little bit different in terms of grand totals and, and who's selling more and, and who's not selling anything at all in certain, uh, in certain areas here. If I come back to the pivot table. I'm just going to hit clear one more time. And maybe I just want to take a look at my high priced items. So I'm going to select those top two. I'm going to select OK. Once again, my pivot table changes because my desk is the high priced item. I've only got three reps who have sold a desk. And here are their numbers as well. If I want to kill that filter, I could either come here and just say uh, select all. So that's going to include everything. Or I can hit this X and come back. Remember, a pivot table is dynamic. You can keep coming in here and changing the values that you want displayed and the filters that you want to add as a part of your data. Now, if you want to see your sales data clearly and feel organized every day, you should check out Pipedrive. Pipedrive is the easy to use sales tool that you don't need an IT degree to work with. You can visually track your leads, pipelines, and communication in one place and never forget what to follow up about. Pipedrive automates your day so you can spend more time focusing on your customers. You can try Pipedrive free for 30 days and then get 25% off your first three months. Click the link in the description to take advantage of this special offer.